in a traditional quilt layout, sashing is the strips of fabric that go in between the blocks. So today I'm going to share everything you need to know about sashing. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So if you're making a traditional quilt that has blocks and sashing with strips of fabric in between them, there are a lot of different options for sashing. So I'm going to share some things that will help you think through your options and decide what you want to do with the sashing in your quilt. The first thing to think about is your fabric choice. A lot of times, like on this quilt, they're sashing and it's done with the same fabric that's used as a background in your blocks. And in this situation, the blocks kind of float on the sashing and it just blends it in all together. But there are a lot of other options like that. You can see on this fall colors quilt that I used a pattern fabric for the sashing and the borders. And then in the blocks, I used all colors that were pulled out from that sashing fabric. In this pink quilt, I also used a pattern fabric for sashing and the block colors were coordinated with that. If you're trying to choose your fabric, you can check this other video I have that has a little tip that'll make it easy to audition fabrics for your sashing. Of course, there are a lot of other options you can get into with pieced sashing and compound sashing. I'm not going to talk about any of those today. I'm only talking about a simple, basic sashing. Once you've chosen your fabric, the next thing to think about is how wide you want your sashing strips to be. This is totally a personal choice and it's your quilt, you can do whatever you want. But my rule of thumb is to keep it around a quarter to a third of the size of the blocks. So if I had 12 inch blocks, I would use like three, three and a half, four inch sashing. But that's just my personal choice. You can find what you like by looking at pictures of quilts that you like and measuring and seeing the ratio of sashing to block. Another sashing option is to add cornerstones. And cornerstones are squares of a contrasting fabric that go in the middle of the sashing and the corners of the blocks. So if you're interested in putting in cornerstones, I have another video that shares two different methods to put in cornerstones. But for this video, I'm only doing plain sashing. So once you've chosen your fabric and you know how wide you want your sashing to be, then it's time to cut your fabric. So you're going to cut your fabric strips, the width that you determined you want your sashing, plus a half an inch for seam allowance. And you're going to cut them with the fabric. So you'll have these long strips. Now to figure out how many strips you're going to need, you are going to need to do a little bit of arithmetic for that. So you'll just count up how many little pieces you have in between the blocks and then measure that and take the sum and then measure how long the long pieces are going to be between the rows. So if you want more details on doing that calculation, you can click the link below and check out that post. But once you have all your long strips cut, then you can cut the small pieces that you need to put in between the blocks. So I have uh, these fabric squares, they represent the blocks in the quilt, even though these are just plain um, fabric. And, and I'm putting this together in a three by four layout. So my rows are gonna have three blocks across. So just remember when you're adding in sashing, sashing only goes in the middle. So when I'm adding these, I don't need to add anything to the ends because that is going to be where borders go. So I'm going to assemble a row using quarter inch seam allowance and it's going to block, sashing, block, sashing, block. And you would do this with however many blocks you have in your row. So when all the pieces have been joined, you'll have a bunch of rows that look like this. And I like to press the seams toward the sashing because if the blocks have a lot of piecing in them, then the seams will be pressed away from the block. So that will help keep it flat and you won't have seams pressed back onto themselves. And once this is done, take a minute and measure how long your pieces actually are. 
Now you can easily calculate how long these are supposed to be because you'll have block, slashing, block, slashing, block. You can add that up in your head, add a half an inch for seam allowance. So you'll know what it's supposed to be. But measure each of your blocks and just see how close they are to what it's supposed to be. Now, if they're pretty close, if you have blocks that are off by an eighth of an inch, then don't worry about that and just work it in. But if all of your rows are the same size and it's significantly different from what your calculation is that it should be, like if they were all a half inch smaller or a half inch larger, then you can accommodate that when you do your next session. You'll work with what you have. If it's close, work with the ideal. So to do that, you will take your long pieces that you have left from your strips and you will measure that and cut them to the exact size. So don't stitch a long strip on and then just chop off the excess because that will sometimes add stretching or buckling in your quilt. And if you cut the exact size and then sew it on, that will help everything lay flat and smooth and they'll make your quilting a lot easier. Of course, if you have a very large quilt, you're gonna need pieces that are longer than your width of fabric strips. So in this case, you would just join your pieces together with a straight seam and then measure and cut to the size that you need. If you're trying to measure a piece that's longer than your cutting mat, I have a quick video that'll give you tips on how to do that. So cut your pieces the size that you need and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So my strips cut to the size that I need and I'm ready to begin adding these to the bottom of each row. So just remember that you will have a row at the bottom that doesn't have a long sashing strip because that's gonna be the end. So I have four rows in my quilt. I'm only adding this long strip onto three rows, not the row that's in the bottom. Also, if you're dealing with directional fabrics, so something that has a clear up and a down, pay attention to that as you're adding your sashing strips so that you don't end up with one block that is rotated a different way. So to match the sashing strip to our rows, we are gonna need a couple of reference points. So we're gonna begin with folding our row of blocks in half and then finger press or add a pin in that spot to mark it and then fold it in half again, so we're marking the quarters. So now when we unfold it, we have, um, now when we unfold it, we have three distinct points. And we're gonna do the same thing with the sashing piece. Now, if your quilt is really small, like mine, you probably could get away with just marking the center point but I'm marking the quarter points just to show you because in a larger quilt, you will want to do that. And then we're gonna lay them together and add pins at those points. So we're gonna add a pin at each end. And then a pin at each of those reference points. So the center reference point and the quarter reference points. And then if you had a very long piece that you were matching, you might wanna add even more pins just to hold it secure. And then when I'm sewing this at the sewing machine, I sew it with the binding on the bottom. And the reason I do that is because then I can see all the little seams in my blocks and my other sashing so that when I'm sewing, um, I can make sure that they stay folded the right way. It's easy for the foot of the sewing machine to catch it and kind of push it the other way, <clears throat> but I can keep an eye on that while I'm sewing to make sure that everything stays the way that I pressed it the first time. So once these pieces of sashing have been pinned, then we can stitch that with a quarter inch seam allowance. When the long strip of sashing has been added onto the bottom of the rows, then you will add those rows together to assemble the quilt top. 
And remember that there will be a row at the bottom that doesn't have long sashing on it. There it is. The blocks are all assembled with sashing in between them. Now you're ready to move on and add borders to finish off the quilt top. For more quilting, tutorials, tips and patterns, be sure to check out Evita Studio. Thank you.